Hey. Hi, boss. Cinema. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you. It's good. Well, welcome to our Saint Mansus Slave River site. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Kofi. All right. And I'm the site guide over here. We just want to know the history about this place. And you being the tour guide over here, I know you have a lot to tell us and educate the people who are going to watch this video. Our Saint Mansus Slave River site was seen in history as the biggest slave market during the transatlantic slave trade era. It was documented by one British historian in the person of W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. Although there were slave markets like the Piccolo slave market at the Upper East region of Ghana, Salaga market at the northern part of Ghana, Ketekachi market and other markets as well, but the St. Mansu markets here and that of Salaga played a major role during the trade. So captives that were captured from the upper borders of Ghana, like Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and some parts of Nigeria, they were first made to march in chains and shackles, barefooted and half-naked, to the Salaga market at the north. Okay. It was in the Salaga market that they were given the first opportunity to rest, just for a few days, and again, they were made to walk from Salaga to Asin Manso, which was 300 miles by foot, approximately seven months' journey from Salaga to Asin Manso. When coming from, As from Salaga to Asin Manso, one of their greatest challenges was crossing the Praia River. Basically, it was the survivor and the fittest. So those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't continue with the journey, when they got to the river, they were brought out of their chains and shackles and were dumped in that river to die. So when they landed here at Asin Manso, this was the place that they were sorted out according to age and sex. Men separated from the boys, women, children, etc. And in determining their ages, a device called a speculum oris is put into their mouth, open their mouth, count their teeth, thereby forecasting their ages. They were then made to take their last bath before being sold to the merchants. After selling them again, they were made to march in chains and shackles to the Cape Coast Castle, to the Cape Coast Dungeons, which was 35 miles from here, because that was where the slave ship was being docked. During that era, Wherever you were captured, it was a match of no return. Yeah. You're going from your roots and never coming back. So when you're taken to the dungeons of the castle, there's this door with the inscription, the door of no return. Basically, things have changed now. Now our brothers and sisters in the diaspora are coming back to their roots as at when they love to return. So there was a need for us to change that right and that perception on the walls of the castle from the door of no return to the door of return. You know, like you, you've talked a lot, you've taught us a lot of things that really happened. But one thing I really want to understand, they were chained, right? Yeah. Who brought them all the way from Burkina, Nigeria to Asim Manson? So in the slave trade uh, period, I always talk about the post-slavery because both of us contributed in this. We were, we were 70% of the captives were more of prisoners of war. So when I defeat you and I get your, I get your, your, your prisoners for myself, because I'm scared that they are going to live and overcome my kingdom, I just give them out as slaves. So people who gave them as slaves were Africans themselves. Yes, we were having instances where we have Africans. And we have instances where Europeans even kidnap our own people to sell them. We have one, uh, one man from even the Benis, I, maybe I'll give you the, the name later, uh, who deceived them to come on a boat okay. and got them drunk. So before they could open their eyes, they weren't closer and they were just gone. So the Europeans also had a, a scheme of getting these people through kidnap and raiding. But most of us, we also contributed. So in terms of slavery, we always say both of us Clearly contributed. Fun. Yeah. I've seen two grave over here. Yeah. What does this symbolize here? So as I was saying earlier on, in changing that name on the walls of the castle that's written, that is why we have these two of our great ancestors here. Samuel Carl, Madam Christa from Kingston, Jamaica, and Samuel Cousin from New York, US of A. Madam Christa was born in slavery as a young lady, but she couldn't bear seeing the pains, the, atro the atrocities, the torture that was associated to slavery. So in a way, she decided to rebel against the act by starving herself to death. But during that era, whenever you do that, there's a punishment which is meted on you 
to serve as a deterrent from your other captives from doing the same. They chisel your teeth and they force you to feed, which is called a force feeding. This is another punishment Madame Krista have to endure, but because she was fighting for a good cause, she never took in anything until she lost her life. The name Krista came about when they were digging a mortar remains. It was found out that it was having crystals on his bosom. So it even influenced his name, the Madame Krista. We have the descendants of Madame Krista visiting every 27th of, of December just to pour libation and say to their ancestor, Medase, which means thank you. So the remains of Madame Krista was here or this was just built to commemorate? Right? Okay. The far end, we have Samuel Cousin, okay. the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the U.S. Navy. He was assassinated, he died at the age of 35 years, but he wasn't given a befitting barrier okay. because he was one of us. When you want to know more about Samuel Cousin, you can watch this movie, Men of Honor. Oh, yeah. So, in 1998, uh, when this site was opened, their families consulted the Ministry of Tourism and told us about the wish of their great-great-grandparents. Now, it was in their wish that they needed to be buried right on their ancestral route. So in collaboration with the two families, their mortar remains was flown in from Jamaica and US with the Ghana Airways to the Kotoka International Airport, then by boat through the Atlantic Ocean to the Cape Coast Castle, passing through all the channels, coming out of the door of no return to change it to the door of return on the 31st day of July, 1998. When they landed, it was a big ceremony that was held in their favor. Everybody in the community here was made to wear black and red to mourn our ancestors, we had a vigil for them. So the following day, which was the 1st of August, these two of our great ancestors were buried here. So every 1st of August is when Ghana as a nation, we decided to celebrate our Emancipation Festival. Yeah. Uh, this is not just the ancestral graveyard of Madame Christa and Samuel Kazi, no. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters who have sprinkled their ashes all around here. So when you want to even go into this site, it's so sacred that you can't go with your shoes on unless you go with your shoes off because you can walk before you can walk on this sacred path. Can I just go there? You can with your shoes off. So uh, we have one beautiful plant mm -hmm. called the mimosa plant. Okay. Uh, which played a role in our history during the era of slavery. Mm -hmm. This time, mimosa is not, a, it's not a drink in Ghana, it's a plant. So I'll be taking you to the mimosa plant and I'll tell you the role that plant played in our history as Africans. So if you don't mind, please, let's go. I really mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you about the mimosa plant mm -hmm. and the role that it played. You see, during the era of slavery, some of our people also engaged in that. Uh, but majority of us were against it. So those that, those that was, were, was, were against the slavery were also seen, seen as rebels and they were equally targeted. So to avoid them from being captured, they also started hiding in caves and mountains to protect themselves. So at their hideout, they grew some of these plants at the strategically placed positions around the cave. Wow. So this plant informed their decision whether it's safe to come out or not. So early, whenever they want to come out, the leader of the group will peep through the tiny holes around the caves to see whether the plant is as open as we are seeing now. So if it's as open as we are seeing now, then they suspect it is safe, nobody is out, so you can come out and do whatever you feel like doing. Yeah. But when the plant is like this, close like this, then they realize there's a movement around. They don't want to take that risk, so they don't come out. So this plant called a mimosa plant, saved a lot of our brothers and sisters during the era of slavery. Yeah. Now I've changed this name from Mimosa uh, to a destiny plant and it has some important information to share with our Africans in the diaspora, which I'm not going to give it out today, but when you come over to visit Asin Manso, you're going to know more about this Mimosa plant. You know what, I have people that they really don't have money to come to Africa but they would love to know more about their roots, you know. Yeah. So I would love to, like, you know, on behalf, I will, I will plead on their behalf, if you would just share a little bit, not not too much, but a little bit, let, because I've been getting emails about people telling me, what am I, I really want to come to Africa, but I just don't have the finance. So please, on behalf of them. 
can you just tell us a little bit don't go into details just one minute so basically about these plants i always call it the most the destiny plants because okay. it is following us wherever we go as africans and uh, when you check you realize that it is we can find it at almost every part in the Caribbean yeah. and almost some selected sites in the US of A. Okay. So basically, whenever you, you see these plants, mm -hmm. our ancestors will never leave us without giving us traces of where we're coming from. Okay. So whenever you see these plants, it's only telling you one thing, where you belong, which is why they should pray to their ancestors, they will get money to come back to their roots. Wow. That is, that is it. So wow. uh, basically, whenever they see it somewhere, it's just telling them and, and telling them where they're coming from, and that is Africa. So, because this place was the biggest market, mm -hmm. we were having a slave market at the same time the slave camp. Okay. The slave camp was where the captives were made to look attractive before bringing them to the market to be auctioned out. Mm -hmm. So the slave camp starts right after the ark you see over there, wow. all the way to the river that serves as a slave camp. And the market starts right in front of this ark all the way to the township, so that made the biggest market. So, as Africans as we are, most often at times when we go into this path, we do it with our shoes off. Oh. And the reason that we do it with our shoes off is because I always talk to myself, Kofi, I always believe that our ancestors were not selfish. Because if they were, through all the pain, the torture that they endured, they could have taken their lives and then there will not be you, there will not be me. Mm. It is at the back of our ancestors that we are alive. Today, we've, be, we've been able to make it because of them. We don't even deserve to walk on the same path that they did. But because we are their children, we just, uh, just just give us the opportunity to walk on the same path that they did so that tomorrow when we have the opportunity to say to our brothers and sisters we will tell them how privileged it was to walk on the same path that our ancestors did okay. and we will tell them from our hearts but not from our heads the second reason why we go with our shoes off is a covenant that you need to fulfill yeah. you didn't come here because you have money to come here no. it is written in your destiny that today you have to come here exactly. so whilst coming back to you you need to, you need to connect with your own land how do you connect with the land? It's by walking barefooted. barefooted. So the soil of the, of the ground... I, I don't have any problem. ...will that touch your feet. Let's and your ancestors will recognize you by your real name and say to themselves, is, it this, is this, this guy not the great-grandson of Yao Koku Menu? Wow! Is it this not the daughter of Akosuya? So if that happens, it makes them so much excited to see you grown up like this, coming back to them. The third reason is just for an experience. So when you have the opportunity to say to your brother or sister, you say it from your heart and not from your head. The last one, most of our brothers and sisters were buried at the bamboo cemetery. I can't come to visit you without alerting you first. So same way you go into them, you have to alert them that you're coming. So by walking barefooted before you get there, your garden angel is already seated, waiting to answer whatever you brought on board. So basically with me, Kofi, the kind of blessings that I get whenever I go through this path, I always prefer going it, going through this path with my shoes off. So as we go in, I'm taking my shoes off so that we make the journey. So we have done it already. Yeah. I've done it already, man. So we we go. Which means that the whole place was bush, right? The whole, place, forest, the right? whole place was a forest. It's and a forest. And this part, uh, when we go into this part, is very, very serious. Okay. We don't talk. We're very, very silent. This is where you have the opportunity to connect with your ancestors. This is where you have the opportunity to meditate. You have to bring back yesterday, today, and even the future. You have to think about all that they endured. And the spirit and the power that comes from this uh, journey is something that you don't even need to miss it. So basically when you go in here, it's basically for yourself, silently, whilst you make the journey to the river. Okay. Cut it up. Slowly, then like you're meditating. So now, as you can see, uh, we've landed in uh, the slave camp. Uh, but this demarcated section that you see around yeah. played a major role during the trade. This was the first auctioning site in the slave camp. This was where the first auctioning and the first branding took place. Now, we're going to go closer to the river 
and there are a lot that we're going to talk about so please let's make the gems server as you can see uh, we have the last bath now this river you see over here there are two separate rivers we have one river that is always moving with the gas flow mm. and we have the other river which is always sleeping now the river that is always moving is called Amma Emisa which gets its source from the Pra River mind you the Pra River was one of the rivers that our brothers and sisters were dumped in to die and this is where this one is getting its source from we have this river also to be known called Insio which literally means the slave river mm. Now, this river is getting a source from the township. This river does not meet. There are two different rivers at their own, uh, their own settlement. They don't even meet. Mm -hmm. Now, this, they were made to wash themselves in this river, but not in that river because with this river, it was always still. Yeah. Uh, last two weeks when you were here, if you could have been here last two weeks, you realize that this river has overflowed its bank and all this place where, where was flooded. This one? Yes, it, all this big river. It was a big river. But the, when it's up, the only difference, difference that you see is that this place is always still and this place is always moving with, with that intensity. So they made them wash themselves in this river still in chains and in shackles. So how can you wash yourself or else you're in chains and shackles? Wow. Imagine if the river is up here and you are thrown down there to wash yourself. Basically, you're going to, get, you're going to be drowned. You know, most of our brothers and sisters were killed in this river because they couldn't uh, survive it when they pushed them in. We have people that were coming from Salaga in the deplorable state. They were seen as so weak and they were killed. We have other people that were very rebellious and they were also seen and killed. You now, all those people that were killed were just discarded at this site and we call the place the Bamboo Cemetery. So all these places that you see are graveyards of our ancestors. We, we, we dug this graveyard for some time but now we don't want anybody to come over and, and dig it any longer because the chief said for once we should allow our ancestors to rest in peace because i told you all the rituals of this community are performed around this section now in the river this is because this place was a camp this was where they were made to look attractive so they used broken bottles to shave their hair for them to look better also in the river they cut the bamboo trees that you see over there the smallest part of it and they split it open to look like a brush and they use that to scrub them while they are in the river. So after scrubbing them, you realize that almost all of them are bruises all over their body with deep cuts with blood oozing out. As we all know, the more you lose this blood, the more weaker you become. With all this, they drag them from the river and their feet develop this footpath. So just in the middle of this section. And they make them go through vigorous exercises in addition, just to determine their strength, because it is believed that with all this blood coming out from you, for you to have been able to perform such an act that makes you the strongest. After that, they clean all the blood from you and they smear you with palm oil and shea butter just for you to shine. So please uh, come with me. Hello, please, can you come with me? Thank you very much. Like, how do you manage to say these things all the time without getting sad? Uh, it is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always sad when it comes to telling of this story. The reason why I'm always sad, I always tell my friends that during the era of slavery, I was there. And now I'm still alive. And they don't know why I always say that to them. If this land that you are standing on can speak, if these trees here can speak, and even if this river, river can tell us the things that have happened here, I'm not sure we could even have the ears to listen to them. No, we will not. Because it will be so scary that we cannot even listen to it. So please, let us just go to, the, to this site and I'm going to show you something. You see, uh, this path uh, was a big baba tree, but it has been uprooted, uprooted by a strong wind. The use of this laboratory is for the first, first auction. This is where after the exercises, they bring, they bring the red slaves, captives here, chain them around it for their first auction. So 
Our brothers and sisters were bought with things like used glue, tobacco, guns, gunpowder, and even during that era, even animals were valuable as compared to us. One ox goes for 15 strong enslaved Africans. So after, after buying your captive, you take your captive to the branding section. This is where they go to put the metal in fire for you to be very hot, stab it at your back, your chest, or your shoulder as a source of identification. Then after that, those of them that were brought here will be made to march straight to the Cape Coast Castle, which was 35 miles from here. And the ones that were not bought in the camp will be taken to the market to be auctioned out. So in terms of history, this was what really happened here. But this site, as I said earlier on, goes beyond history because we have a lot of rituals that we do. So when you come over, you just have to do these rituals, only if you want to or not. There is something I really don't understand in here. I'm seeing first bath of return, and then the last bath. What is the difference between the two? Okay, so you see, during the era of slavery, mm -hmm. uh, the perception out there, and the whole thing about it was, our brothers and sisters are never going to come back again. So it was like going back and never coming back to your roots. So that is when they were giving their last bath. So when you are giving your last bath, it means your last bath on your soil before you be sold to the Cape Coast Castle, waiting for the slave ship and off you go. But now things have changed. Now our brothers and sisters have overcome all these things and are coming back to their roots. So with the last bath of return, one of the rituals that we do is to pass behind it and touch the river to symbolize to the world that it's never going to be our, 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 our last bath. Never because again. there's nothing like last for us. Yes. Everything about us is the first. So from the last bath, we walk through the river and we have, to, we have to come from the first bath of return as a proud African that we can never be killed. There's nothing like last about us and everything about us is the first. So for us, we are not coming for last bath. We are coming for the first bath of return. So, uh, it's been, I don't know how to describe. This is not a pleasure meeting yeah. you, but I feel like, um, I want to say thank you so much for educating me and also the people out there. I believe that even some Ghanaians don't know that this is the history behind this place. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for dedicating your time to educate the world about what really happened. Because so people don't believe that slave trade really yeah, existed. existed. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. I just want to say thank you so much and stay strong and like thank for you, real, I'm, I don't even know what to say, but I'll try and control it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try and control it. So thank you for coming yeah. and enjoy your stay in Ghana. Thank you. I'm still a Ghanaian and Ghana <laughs> is my home. And um, I just want to say that whenever you come to Ghana, don't just go to the Cape Coast Castle or Elmina Castle. Make sure you come in here. Just come and find the history in here come and experience where your ancestors took their last bath before the, slave, uh, the Atlantic slave trade yeah. so it's a boy Mr. Ghana baby and um, I hope you guys I don't say you're gonna enjoy the episode I, I know you most of you did not enjoy it but um, I hope you learned something new and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one I help my <laughs> Thank you.